Hello everyone, Steve here from Tech Toy Tinker and Retro Arena. I'm going to do a video today for the release of the beta image of Retro Arena for the Win 600. This video is going to be, it's going to have some gameplay in it, but it's going to have a lot of information as well. So there's going to be a lot of different things you have to take in from this video. The first one is that I've set this up to boot from a USB stick. The reason why is because there's already SteamOS and Windows 10 that runs from the internal memory. And so there's not really a point in making a replacement OS for the internal storage. There is, however, a lot of room to make a USB bootable OS, which will allow this system to, in fact, triple boot. All you have to do is hold volume up when you turn it on, and you'll bring up a boot menu where you can choose between Windows and Steam OS if you've installed them both. And having a USB stick with Retro Arena on it will add a third option to that list. You can see here in the options menu, I've added 5, 10, 15, and 18 watt TDP settings. 18 is the highest so far that we've seen have any effect. We can do 20 or 25, but we don't see any performance gain from it, so why waste battery life? This is your RetroArch GUI, and this is a little bit different from the other handheld builds in the sense that there's actually a GUI here under Retro Arena Setup in Options, and what that will do is it will allow you basically to update your own cores and emulators and add your own changes here. You can see everything's here. There's packages, cores to update, RetroArch, an emulation station. The rest are pretty obvious, Libretro standalone. You can change how run command works, but I don't recommend you do it if you don't know what you're doing there. You can download your themes from here, regular emulation station, and all of Hursty's themes. The theme that it includes out of the box is Sweeter Tinkerboard, or Sweet Tinkerboard. It's um, a theme, Hursty made a theme called Super Sweet, and Tinkerboard had a lot more systems than Raspberry Pi, so he had to make a, a variant for the Tinkerboard that had all the extra systems included. So shout out to Dwayne Hursty for the theme. Kind of give you an overview of what's here. Dreamcast Atmosphere, I did that in a previous video, so we don't got to go there today. GameCube here should be pretty much set up out of the box. If you want to make any changes, launch the GUI from desktop and make your changes there. To exit, just hold down the home button. When it's a RetroArch game, you double tap home button. There's still a few things like Lutro, Chai Love that need to be added to the uh, theme. I added Mega Duck yesterday.
I also added Pico 8, but it's not added to the theme yet. PS2 is a mixed bag. Some games work, some games don't. PSP, there's been huge improvements. You can play God of War now. Residual VM, I will remove over time as I update Scum VM. For now, I've only used the Libretro Scum VM. So what Residual VM will do is it'll play the Last Monkey Island and Grim Fandango and the 3D games that Scum does not play. I heard a lot of people saying Saturn didn't work on this, and that's not true. It does so. For that one, because it's retro arch, you just double tap home. But the point remains the same. Saturn does work. Oozebox and Thompson MOTO. Theodore. Now, we is where it gets interesting. Does it work? Yeah, some games do. Not every game works. I'm not going to lie to you. But there are some games that are playable. Like, I don't remember if I've configured the controllers here. But let's find out together. If I haven't, I'll jump out and do it after. Oh, I think I have.
I would for sure call that playable. Not every game's going to be like that, but there are some that do work okay. Now, here, because it was giving me an issue trying to launch Steam shortcuts, what I've done for now is it, this will just directly launch Steam for you. And then for all your Windows-based games using Wine and whatnot, you can directly launch them from Emulation Station here. And sometimes that'll happen. I haven't launched the game from the desktop yet, which sometimes honestly does help to run it from there first, which I'll, I'll just try it after the, I leave ES to see how it goes. Or I could press the wrong button and try it again right now from ES without meaning to. And hey, it worked. I had pressed Alt F4 to close the game, if anyone's curious why that popped up again. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of systems here. It's not in my personal build because I forgot to add the folder to my ROMs folder. But in the public build, Cody is also included as well. I'm going to go ahead and jump out of Emulation Station here. I'll just show you. Oh, well, apparently I only installed it on the public build and not on my personal build. The reason there's a difference is because I work off of one USB stick for the public build, and then I have my own personal stick that I use for testing and adding things to, and then when things work properly, then I add them to the public USB stick build. So the Windows folder will be in your ROMs folder, and that's where you want to put or install your Wine games too. I give up on Hollow Knight for now. I'll play with it later.
So here in desktop, you've got access to obviously a desktop, but you can access the GUIs for the emulators here. So what I was saying about Dolphin, if you want to change your settings like the graphics from Vulkan, you, you come here, do it in the desktop, and it will carry over into Emulation Station. The same is true for PlayStation 2. And um, I plan to add Melon DS. The games seem to work fine from the uh, cores that are available. However, I want to add the standalone Melon DS anyway. I've never tried Super Meat Boy. I don't know if it runs or not. It seems like because um, the previous game didn't work, Wine's just being stubborn now, because it's very clearly running in the corner. I probably have to reboot to clear it out. Wine's a pretty stubborn thing sometimes. I assume it's probably going to do that over any game that I run now just because that one game didn't work and I need to reboot to get rid of it. But fortunately, that's pretty much the end of the video anyways. I just wanted to show you guys what's coming for Retro Arena. It's actually going to be available today in beta form, but people, I don't think they're going to have their units for a few days. However, I wanted it to be ready as soon as the people started getting their devices so they could use it if they wanted. And I think that using it from the USB stick and having the triple boot option is probably the best way to go. But as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And be sure to keep your eyes open for the next couple of videos where I'll do a lot more PC game testing and I'll go into some original Xbox and things of that nature as well. Take care.